On today's show, you'll get an inside look into the haunted castle. You'll be introduced to the new superintendent. And you'll hear how two local photographers are capturing images for charities. All of that and more coming up next. Numerous times of people falling, being in their pants, screaming, it's great. So I don't take any money at all for senior pictures, everything goes straight on my donation page. We offer all sorts of activities, whether you're two years old or, or 80 years old. Welcome to Studio 415. I'm Stella Brewer-Vartanian. And I'm Tristan Wasserman. With Halloween just around the corner, many students are looking for fun and exciting ways to celebrate the spooky season. In my story, I explore why the haunted castle and black forest have been an icon of Fort Wayne's Halloween pride going on 42 years. I would also like to warn anyone who has a sensitivity to light that this story has strobe lights and other bright lights in it. With the fall breeze beginning to set in and Halloween just around the corner, many students are looking for ways to show their Halloween spirit. Since 1980, the Haunted Castle has stood as one of Fort Wayne's prime attractions of fun and fear. Freshman Ethan Ring says that the Haunted Castle is a great place for the community to gather. It brings people together. I hear a lot of friends coming through here with them and then getting to scare them is really fun. While the Haunted Castle remains a staple of local Halloween festivities, the Haunted Castle is joined by its sister haunt, the Black Forest. The forest has been in operation with the castle every fall since 1980, both being operated by a mix of students and adults with the St. Vincent's Boy Scouts Troop 2, Varsity Team 6402, and Venture Crew 2802. Junior Assistant Scoutmaster Braden Puglis says there are many age requirements of the job. So the younger guys will work in the castle, and then once they get a bit older, they'll be able to go out to the forest. And then if you're 14 years and older, you are allowed to do chainsaw. Puglis has enjoyed his time working for the haunted castle in Black Forest. The haunts operate throughout the late September weeks and all of October of every year, so Puglis and his crew start setting up the haunts in early August so they are ready for opening night. Inside the haunts, there are jump scares, chainsaws, slides, stalkers, animatronics, a vortex tunnel, and lots of screams. Um, numerous times of people falling, being in their pants, screaming, it's great. If you'd like to celebrate your Halloween fear throughout the month of October, stop by the Haunted Castle in Black Forest on Auburn Road, or get your tickets online at the Haunted Castle website. For Studio 415, I'm Tristan Wasserman. In the last two years, NACS has seen three different superintendents, including Dr. Chris Himsel and Dr. Steve Yeager. And now Studio 415 reporter William Jamison meets with the newest superintendent, Wayne Barker. Thanks, Stella and Tristan. I had the opportunity to meet Superintendent Wayne Barker and hear his plans for the foreseeable future and how he's adjusting to NACS as a whole. Throughout the turbulent pandemic, NACS was not immune to scrutiny and trial. The past couple years have seen intense debates over masking, vaccinations, and curriculum. These unsettling times, coupled with the resignation of former superintendent Dr. Chris Himsel, led to the eventual hire of Wayne Barker. Barker has seen many changes of scenery in his 32-year career, starting his time in education as a business teacher at Carroll in 1989. Barker transitioned to administration in 1995 when he took the job of assistant principal at Bluffton High School. After years as a principal, Barker stayed at Bluffton, becoming superintendent. In 2019, after 10 years as superintendent at Bluffton, after three years at Mishawaka City Schools, Barker's career has truly come full circle. As he returned to Northwest Allen County Schools, Barker hopes NACS will be the last chapter of his career in education. It's my goal to finish my, my professional career here. So I, I started here in 1989 as a teacher and was blessed to teach here for five years and had a great experience and have gone away and done some other things. But now to come back here, this is my 34th year in education and I intend very fully to finish my career here. With Northwest Allen having 2,500 more students than Barker's past district, Mishawaka City Schools, he will have to adapt to the new challenges of a larger and more suburban district. With the population in mind, Mr. Barker feels everything is going smoothly. Well, this, this school district is bigger by almost 3,000 students, so by having 3,000 more students, we have about 400 more employees here. Uh, that brings in more parents, so just the challenge of, of meeting more people. School board president Ronald Felger, who has served on the school board for 40 years, believes that Wayne Barker's willingness to work together will start him off in a good place. It's been great. I mean, he's, he's open. Uh, 
very visible. Um, yeah, I mean, he's, al he's always there for, you know, to answer questions or to collaborate and work through things. With his 32 years of administrative experience, Wayne Barker should have what it takes to carry the torch of Northwest Allen County Schools. For Studio 415, I'm William Jameson. The fall is upon us, a time for families to come together and enjoy the outdoors together as the leaves turn color and the farmers harvest their fields. Studio 415 reporter Ali Asawa knows just how to enjoy the season and joins us in the studio with more. I had the opportunity to visit the family-owned Keenert Dairy Farm Festival to see how it is celebrating its 10th anniversary of bringing the community together. Starting Friday, September 16th, Keener Dairy Farm opened up their doors to another year of fall fun. The festival runs through the months of September to October. They're open on Fridays from 6 p.m. to 10 p.m., Saturdays from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m., and on Sundays from 12 p.m. to 5 p.m. The festival has activities for everyone, including a hayride, pumpkin painting, and an inclusive look at the dairy cows. Kids may be more drawn to the jump pad, haystack, and the corn pit. Customers of all ages found something they enjoyed doing. I got a trampoline. You jumped on the trampoline? Yeah. Yeah? Did you, did you feel like you're flying? Yeah. Did you jump really high? Yeah, I jumped and grabbed it like this. Wow. <laughs> Probably the hay bales that you climb up or the go-karts thing. That's cool. It's probably the ninja, ninja course. I like competing. Me and my dad compete on it. I usually win. Kind of a stud like that, but um, no, I'm just kidding. Um, that's probably my favorite thing to do. To enjoy these festivities, the entry fee is $10, while kids two and under get in free. To keep customers safe, Keenert Dairy Farm has introduced a new policy in which all customers have to sign a waiver before entering the farm. The festival encourages families to get together and enjoy each other's company. Volunteer Layla Elliott believes that the farm is a place for the community. I feel like it brings people together with uh, just being able to do something during the fall and not having to like go to the store and buy pumpkins. Like you can come here, paint them with people, or um, just enjoy the rides and the games. A main attraction of the festival is the six acre corn maze. Every year the farm takes on a different design that incorporates the idea of milk. This season the theme is level up with milk and is represented with iconic video game characters in Mario. While the dairy farm has been running for 125 years, the fall festival is a newer addition in the past 10 years. Andrew Keener believes that each year the festival improves. It's amazing how the festival has changed. So this is our 10th year of running the fall festival and I can still remember the first year that we did. And it was a, it was a rough time when we first began. And so we've learned a lot over the years. And you know, we keep every year we keep trying to make the festival better and better and better. And we keep talking to people and realizing uh, what we need to do to make the experience more positive for everybody. And it's, it's become a great event for everybody. Attendees of the festival have also noticed the development of the fall fair. Festival goer Kinley Garman believes that the festival has changed drastically from when she came as a child. I've actually been going here for a long time. Uh, we, my family came here when it was like barely half of this, so it's kind of fun to just see how it's like grown. Um, it's definitely like two times the size that it was when we first came, so that was it's, it's, that's pretty cool. If you would like to come celebrate with the Keenert Dairy Farm family, the festival runs until October 30th. For Studio 415, I'm Ollie Zala. Many high schoolers get professional photos taken their senior year in preparation for graduation. There are several options when it comes to photographers and it may be difficult to find the one that suits your needs. Two photographers in Fort Wayne are here to take your pictures for a cause. Studio 415 reporter Georgia Christman brings us more on the story. If you have gone to a Carol Sporting event this season, you may have noticed someone on the sidelines in a bright neon vest with a camera. Photographer Judd Johnson calls his local photo business Leverage Photography, which is a non-profit organization. All the money Johnson raises taking pictures during games gets donated to LifeSong, an organization for raising money to help families who are looking to adopt. Johnson has helped just over 30 families this year and can't wait to keep donating his time and talent for a cause he is passionate about. Johnson gets paid for these events, which goes straight to LifeSong. LifeSong will then hold on to those funds until family in need applies, and that money will go to the family wanting to adopt. I've raised over $265,000 for adoptions. We've helped over 30 families. Um, from the very beginning, my passion was to help people in full-time ministry. I'm a pastor's kid, um, so we love to help people that can't generate really any extra income. Johnson got the idea for the name of Leverage from his local church during a sermon. God blessed it, and that sermon series that gave me that idea was called Leverage, how to use your time and your talent 
and your influence on others for kingdom building purposes. Another local photographer you may have heard of right here at Carroll High School is ASL teacher Nancy Scholes. Scholes loves taking photos for seniors and of different student sporting events. Scholes donates 100% of profits to Give Here, a local nonprofit audiology clinic. Scholes chose to donate to Give Here due to her passion for helping others who are deaf or hard of hearing. Scholes felt a calling to give back to her community, which led to her using a talent for her greater cause. I started volunteering for them a few years ago at some of their fundraisers. And um, then I started taking pictures and I was looking away for a way to maybe give back to the community. Schultz has been professionally taking pictures now for nearly five years. Schultz says that she was always going behind the lens taking pictures for her family and friends. She felt that she could put that talent into a service for her local community to provide donations for a place she is most passionate about. Um, I just felt like I didn't want to get paid for that and I could still provide a service to kids and um, then also help out give here. If you would like senior pictures or sports pictures done, make sure to get in contact with Nancy Scholes or Judd Johnson by email or social media. And for Studio 415, I'm Georgia Christman. You might have seen a couple new faces in the guidance department of the Freshman Center on the 1012 side. Studio 415 reporter Zach Kirkpatrick joins us in the studio to help us get to know these new faces. Thanks guys. There's been a lot of new teachers and guidance counselors this year, but these guidance counselors aren't necessarily new to NACS. In my story, I get to sit down with Jessica McClure and Jeremy Heidenreich to learn more about them. This year saw the addition of two new guidance counselors, Jeremy Heidenreich and Jessica McClure. While Heidenreich worked at both Carroll Middle School and Maple Creek Middle School, McClure used to work at Carroll High School before returning this year. With multiple years under the belt, Heidenreich and McClure have been through it all in terms of being a guidance counselor along as being in the classroom. Even though Heidenreich left the classroom, he has found the importance of being a guidance counselor. Um, just to, to walk through things together, I think it's super important um, that, that students feel connected with me and that uh, I'm, I'm helping them with um, wherever they're at. Lots of people come to Carroll to either work or pursue a solid education in the Northwest Allen County School District. When coming back to Carroll, McClure thought it was a unique opportunity to become a guidance counselor after spending some time at the kindergarten level. Students really change and grow, and I think I'm looking forward to the next time I inherit freshmen uh, in a couple of years because some of those students I will have known when they were coming into kindergarten as little kids. Guidance counselors have a very important role in everyday functions inside and outside the school day. Having more than one guidance counselor per grade level gives students a chance to have a more personal connection to the guidance counselors. High right wants students to feel attached when attending Carroll. And then I work with uh, students on a lot of personal issues um, and social issues just to help them through because let's be honest, uh, high school is tough sometimes and um, I want to walk with folks um, through personal issues as well. The school year is a long uphill battle for some teachers and students. McClure has been through it all and seen many faces while working at her 17th year in guidance. McClure also depends on connections with others at her job. So I think you're 22, what keeps me coming back again is just the people. Um, you know, people are still people. Um, and some things have changed um, since I was here last, but in essence, people are still people. Just like students, guidance counselors have a social life outside their profession and would like their students to know that they are more than just guidance counselors. Kind of a sportsy family, and so I love going and sitting um, in the stands and cheering on my own kids as they, um, you know, play their sports. To, I've been working, I have a new lifting regimen and some new vitamins and supplements um, that I've been taking, so um, I, I just want to, I, I want to see if you see the results I'm seeing. So. Uh, check this out. Um, it, it may shock you, um, but uh, this new workout plan I've been on is pretty phenomenal. Along with Heidenreich's strict workout regiment, Heidenreich also has a fun side back when he was younger. I've got no hair, but in seventh grade, I rocked a pretty strong mullet. Business in the front, party in the back. So um, I just want to let you know that. If you see any of these guidance counselors, feel free to stop by and say hi. They are always here for your academic or personal needs. For Studio 415, I'm Zach Kirkpatrick. There are many ways for students to earn money, with some taking up a summer or after-school job. There are a variety of jobs for students. 
Studio 415 reporter Sawyer Maddox looked at one job a little closer to Carroll students. Thanks guys, with many different jobs available to high schoolers, my story takes a look at a local facility with imminent openings for teens. Carroll's Natatorium has served the Carroll swim team and offers swim lessons to elementary students, but this requires instructors and lifeguards. The Natatorium usually employs Carroll students to fill these positions, but with the fall season in full swing, many of these positions have been left empty. Administrative Assistant Heather Kressel hopes to fill these positions right away. I'd love to hire anybody before oh, middle of October because we have another session that starts October 23rd and I know I lose some instructors to um, different sports and stuff. So anybody that could hire now, it would be great because then I could have them start shadowing on Sundays. Kressel says she hopes to hire at least three or four more lifeguards. She also hopes to hire more instructors to help teach swim day lessons to elementary students. Then we also have a lot of openings for swim instructors, and so most of the time for swim instructors I need somebody that's going to be able to be good with children. With such a high amount of responsibility, one may believe a high school student isn't up for the task. Though lifeguard and swim instructor Lori Chappelle believes that there are plenty of teenagers mature enough to complete the job. I think that there are well many high schoolers that are mature enough to handle this. And I think that it also um, can bring out and teach them how to become even more mature as they do it and showing that they have taken on that responsibility. Chappelle believes that the lack of filled positions has left a large workload on the people already employed at the natatorium. I feel like it has put an extra workload on people. Uh, we still try to maintain all of the things that we can do. Some of us are really um, stretching a little bit thin as far as our energy. The Natatorium is always looking for qualified people to fill these positions. If you are interested or have any questions, you can email Heather Kressel or Ben Sutton or head over to the Natatorium and pick up an application. For Studio 415, I'm Sawyer Maddox. There are many dog parks around Fort Wayne, but recently a new unique place is opened for dogs. Vitals Forest is a place to let your dogs run free and expel energy. Studio 415 reporter JC Zollinger brings us more on this story. Thank you, Stella and Tristan. Vitals Forest was open and running early this summer as a place to help your dog exercise in a natural setting. Here's what they have to offer. Between all dog parks and ways to exercise your dogs, Vitals Forest is a five-acre gated in forest off of Wallen Road where your dog can run free with no other dogs. The forest is safe and has been cleaned out of any poisonous things that your dog could eat. Throughout the forest, there are signs to pay attention to, such as instructions, path names, and bags to pick up your dog's droppings. The forest also has entertainment for humans, so you're not bored. Owner Trista Miller says that Fido's Forest also has benefits for humans as well. Well, besides being beneficial for the dogs, this place is really great for humans to go to, too. So it's really important for our mental health to spend time out in nature, and of course exercise is important, too. So we specifically made trails throughout. We have a picnic area, and we have benches for humans to have fun, too. Miller says her vision was to make a place for dogs to be dogs and for people without backyards or land to let their dogs have fun. She says the goal for her facility has been reached. So my vision was to create a place that the dogs could come and play off leash and just be a dog and have an opportunity that most dogs don't get to have. You can book a private session for $19 every hour for one dog, $24 an hour for two dogs, and $29 an hour for three dogs. Fridays Forest is a busy place, so Miller recommends to book two weeks in advance. If you're interested in letting your dogs run free at Fattest Forest, make sure to check out the website to book a session. And for Studio 415, I'm JC Zollinger. That's all we have for today. Thanks for watching. If there's a story you would like us to cover, please let us know. For all of us here at Studio 415, have a great week, Carol.